All right, so our next speaker uh, today is Antoine Boutin, and uh, he's going to talk about can one hear the shape of a quantum space time? So, Antoine, whenever you want, floor is yours. I'll give you a two minute warning. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll be talking about some work I did uh, for my master's project with my uh, project at Imperial College with my project partner, Julia, and our uh, supervisor, Yasman Yazdi. And the question we, try, we were trying to answer was, um, can one hear the shape of a quantum space time? So quantum gravity is a difficult problem in part because it seeks to unify uh, two areas of physics that use uh, different mathematical language. So QFT is based on the on, on the analysis, whereas GR uh, uses a different geometry, a differential geometry as its framework. And so it, it could be interesting to find um, an area of mathematics that can bridge this gap. And what's one such area is spectral geometry, which uh, gives us an analytical way of talking about geometry. So spectral geometry is uh, the field of mathematics that uh, essentially tries to answer the question, can one hear the shape of a drum? So if we only have uh, the sound waves produced by the drum, can we reconstruct uh, its shape? Or uh, more mathematically, it's the study of manifolds uh, through the eigenvalues of differential operators uh, on them. So this is what we call the spectrum. And spectral geometry is well understood by mathematicians on Riemannian manifolds uh, with a lot of important results. Uh, however, if we're interested um, in quantum gravity, uh, we are looking at space times, which are generally described by Lorentzian manifolds. Uh, and there's been little work on spectral geometry of Lorentzian manifolds because it's much harder than the Riemannian case. Um, and, and to give a quick example of why this could be useful for quantum gravity, um, we could imagine that one uh, might want to sum over space times. Uh, however, it is not trivial uh, how uh, we would sum over uh, geometries. So it might be easy instead to convert uh, to the spectra of these space times, sum, them, uh, sum over them, and then uh, use the, uh, the resulting spectra, uh, spectrum to convert back uh, to a space time. So uh, to make our job a bit easier, we use the framework of cool set theory which is a theory of quantum gravity in which uh, space-time is fundamentally discrete. So the continuous manifold we are used uh, to emerges from an underlying discrete causal set. And uh, this causal set is a set of elements with a partial order. And each element represents a space-time event. And the partial order gives us uh, their causal relation. So with this structure and um, a, uh, a length scale, uh, one can completely describe uh, a space-time. So a, a quick example. So here's uh, uh, the Hasse diagram of a, a five-element causal set. And so for instance, here we can see that event one precedes event five. But for example, event five and four are not at all causally related. So we, we cannot say if one precedes the other. Uh, so because we're interested in uh, spectral geometry, we need to find uh, operators. And thankfully, we can uh, define operators on causal sets. And actually, it simplifies our problem uh, because on finite causal sets, operators are discrete matrices with a finite number of eigenvalues. So instead of having to uh, solve uh, uh, the eigensystem of a differential operator, we can just uh, uh, solve it for uh, a matrix. And so, for example, an, an example of, 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 mat of matrix operator we might uh, use is the causal matrix which uh, gives us the causal structure of the, of the causal set. It completely describes the causal set. Uh, unfortunately, the causal matrix is not suitable because its spectrum is trivial. So instead, we have to take combinations of the causal matrix. And um, because it's a normal matrix, we can simply take the self-adjoint and anti-self-adjoint parts. And this will give us uh, non-trivial spectra. Uh, finally, if we want to uh, study um, the spectra of different space times using causal set theory, we need to have a way to generate causal sets which correspond to specific manifolds. And so for this, we use Poisson sprinkling, which is the process of sprinkling events onto a manifold, uh, making sure that the probability of having n points in a volume V at density rho follows a, a Poisson law, a Poisson distribution. 
Um, and, and then we can just use the metric of the space time to, uh, to link uh, the events. Uh, however, not all the causal sets uh, can be embedded into a manifold. There are so-called non-manifold causal sets. So here we have an example, uh, which is a KR set, which is non-manifold-like because it only has three layers uh, in time. And these are, uh, are important because we would want to suppress them if, if, if causal set theory would be a, a theory of quantum gravity. So what we wanted to see is uh, if the spectra of, uh, of operators of causal sets could be used to distinguish equivalence classes of causal sets, in particular, uh, causal sets of certain dimensions and uh, also non manifold causal sets. So here we've simply plotted uh, the spectra of different causal sets. So these causal sets have uh, 10,000 elements and uh, they are embedded into manifolds, uh, uh, fl flat space time. Uh, so we have hypercubes uh, of, uh, from 2D to 7D, as well as a car order. And what we can see is uh, because this is a log log plot and we, uh, we see uh, straight lines, we have power laws. And in particular, we can uh, see that the care order uh, behaves differently from all the other uh, uh, spectra. So uh, it seems to indicate that we are able to distinguish manifold likeness from uh, the spectrum alone. So if now we fit those power laws, we, can, we, we see that uh, the powers of the power laws actually order themselves in terms of dimension. So, uh, so here I have the, we have the powers uh, and the dimensions and you can see, so 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D and 7D are all ordered. So it seems that the power law actually uh, allows us to uh, determine the dimension of the core set. And the KR order is an outlier uh, which, um, with a much smaller power. So uh, the spectrum would allow, might allow us to determine both the dimension and uh, the manifold likeness of the core set. Uh, a second approach uh, we took was uh, using so-called co-perturbations. So um, instead of just looking at the spectrum of a call set, uh, we are interested in how the spectrum changes as the call set change, changes. So for instance, if we have two call sets that are symmetric, uh, the spectrum will end up being the same. So instead, we can look at uh, the change of the spectrum as we add elements to the call sets and this will allow us to distinguish them. So here we've taken the call set from previously and we've just added one co-perturbation. So we've added an element to uh, the fifth event. And so the spectrum, the resulting spectrum will be different. Uh, and so what we want to do is to co-perturb a call set and then compare the spectra of the co-perturbed version of the call set and the original call set. And so to do this, we introduce uh, the spectral distance, which will simply be the sum of the absolute values of the differences of uh, the eigenvalues of the two uh, core sets. And so what we did was we, uh, we generated core sets in different uh, of dimensions, as well as uh, curvatures, and also different uh, care orders. So care uh, KR orders with one layer, and then we've added layers, so three and five layers. Uh, and then we fully perturb those call sets. So we've added elements to every single element in, in those call sets. And we looked at the, um, uh, the, the, the sp spectral distance between uh, the score sets. And so what we find is we get once again something that looks like a power law. Um, um, and, and this time, uh, we don't seem to have any distinguishability between dimension or curvature. So here we have dim causal diamonds in flat space time as well as distance space. We, we, we don't seem to find a pattern uh, that distinguish between them. However, we do see that the non-manifold like causal sets seems to be distinct compared to the other uh, causal sets. Antoine, two minutes. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so as a conclusion, we have found some uh, evidence uh, that, one, that one can in fact hear the dimension of a space time and its manifold like nature. Uh, and future work could include studying the spectrum of the core set deliberation in search of a Laurentian version of Weyl's law. So Weyl's law is a, is a law in spectral geometry that, um, that tells us that the, the spectrum of, uh, the, La, of uh, the Laplacian in uh, a Riemannian manifold uh, follows a power law which, uh, where the power uh, is related to the dimension of the manifold. 
And so since we've seen uh, hints that uh, the, the, the something similar exists for causal sets, uh, it might be interesting to uh, look for a more rigorous uh, version of this, which could be uh, generalized not only to causal set, but to all Lorentzian manifolds. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Antoine. We have time for one question. Remember also that if you can stick around, there will be more questions at the end of the session. All right, I don't see any hands. Okay, well, if there aren't any questions, then let's uh, thank Antoine again and uh, let's